live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2016. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Cisco, IBM, NVIDIA, and our ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Peter Burris. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Ken Tsai is here, he's the Vice President of Data Management and Cloud Platform at SIP, SAP CUBE alum. Ken, thanks for coming back. Thank you so much for inviting me. So, big news this week. <laughs> yes. The, uh, Many say the worst kept secret, but the, you know, the, the secret's out. So congratulations on the, uh, on the announcement, the acquisition of AltaScale. Yes. Tell, us, tell us about that. So we're very excited about AltaScale acquisition. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the news did leak somehow. Uh, it wasn't our intent. Um, but um, AltaScale is, I would say, one of the predominant Hadoop as a services offering in the cloud. Right? Um, really, the, the company has been founded by really early thought leaders in the Hadoop space, coming out of the Yahoo with Remy Stata and the rest of the leadership team, who had to operationalize, I say, thousands of nodes of Hadoop clusters directly in Hadoop, right, where the birthplace of Hadoop actually started it. You saw a lot of different, different thinking in terms of uh, you know, how to operationalize Hadoop by multiple different different to do digital vendors. But ultimately, I think where it comes down to SA, uh, for SAP and our product strategy is we, we, we saw the need to really simplify and, and to, to ease the, the whole Hadoop consumption experience and Hadoop-based innovation to, to the customer, and cloud is the way to go, right? And we saw a very strong, not only the leadership team, but the technology and the software IP they built in terms of operationalizing Hadoop as a service for 24 by seven directly in the cloud in a very high performance, but economical matter, right? So this is kind of the kind of fit very well into our vision in terms of how you introduce and operationalize Hadoop-based innovation directly in the enterprise context. Ken, what's your perspective on, on big data and Hadoop equals big data? I mean, we've been here now seven years at, at Hadoop World. I was, not only was I the only person with a tie back then, I probably still am, but, but even with a suit jacket, back in the day, it was yeah. just really a technical crowd. And, and Hadoop was associated with big data, but you mm -hmm. do more than just Hadoop. So why the focus on Hadoop and what's beyond Hadoop? Right, so I think that's a great question. And I think all, all of us technologists have kind of come to that realization, right? I think in the early days, because of the hype of the Hadoop, Hadoop and the big data side, right? You don't get credibility by not mentioning Hadoop, but working something along with Hadoop. People now wised up in terms of dealing with data size, volume, variety. There's multiple different data processing technology. There's great NoSQL database technologies. There are different ways of dealing with uh, you know, data at scale at a high performance and different varieties. Uh, even from the classic data warehouse, you know, databases extended to, let's say, NoSQL, you know, to like distributed transaction databases to Hadoop HDFS, right? So, uh, and Spark on top of that. So you can, I, I think really the, as company and the world become more mature in terms of the, the promise of big data, right? What actually remain is the concept of big data, right? The concept of that I store first and process later. I think that is still continue to be the true, right? Well, there. let's build on that so yeah. that the, uh, and I think this goes back to all the scale as well, that the, uh, that the process of adopting any technology, mm -hmm. you can kind of see certain patterns, and mm -hmm. you start with something, and you like a dupe, and you mm -hmm. say, oh, this is cool, what can I do with this? And you start doing it, and you discover some limits, and you end up with specialization, and people build new tools, and we're kind of very much in the middle of that, and eventually it kind of comes back together, and you can kind of see it integrate, but I think we're entering into a period in which the, uh, the goal is not so much to learn the tools, but the goal is to achieve the outcomes. I think the market is becoming much more focused on the specific outcomes and much less concerned about how they get to those outcomes. Speed to outcome seems to become uh, increasingly an increasing feature of the conversations that we're having. Uh, as, an, as a company with an application heritage that focuses on the work that the business is trying to conduct. How is that informing your decisions to, certainly by all to scale, but take a look generally on how you want to present SAP to the big data universe? Right. So I think that's a great question. Right? Ultimately, it's about the outcome of business that you can achieve. Right? And I think with any type of technology, adoption cycle that you see. It goes down you know, from the hype cycle to the real truth or disillusionment and to the reality. It's, it's all value driven. 
And SAP's point of view, and, and when we look at the big data technology investment, right, as I share in our previous conversations, we kind of got into the whole big data distributed computing framework with the introduction of SAP HANA Bora March this year, right? In short six months, we're seeing great growth in product and customer adoptions in this area. But ultimately, it's beyond, right, just a set of software. What actually is the outcome? So our point of view is, is there are specific, I think, gap, right, on the both technology and also business semantic gap on kind of preventing the enterprise from fully embracing uh, big data as a whole, right? Technology gap could be not just the, the fast, faster deployment of whether you're using, you know, HDFS, Hadoop-based open source technology or whatever other open source technology that makes sense, um, to the business semantic understanding between the different data that are now dealing with the data variety that are the not necessarily have a structure of enterprise application or data warehouses. How do you bring that together, right? How do you bring the, the understanding of, let's say, a time series data you collected from sensor to the, you know, that has to be a stock tick data that has a you know, currency element to it, right? So these are very practical things that SAP has a lot of uh, understanding in terms of how to bring it together. And that's certainly where evolving the software. And then next level up is about really building that next level applications, right? How do you have these like big data enriched applications really has a different business model outcome or this is uh, transformation you can yeah, have. Yeah, taking all that experience and then turning it in software that then can go out to broader, broader use cases and customers. Right, and I think as you kind of deliver, you know, just like any other industries, right, as you up, up the value of the solution and you really lower the adoptions of the technology to the masses, right? So um, I think we have already seen the adoption, I mean, even at Strata event, right, there, there's a lot of discussion and focus on the use case here, right? Representing the, really the sophistication of enterprise customer now looking, not necessarily just at the technology itself, but really the outcome they want to do. And when I have the outcome, how ready and how packaged is it? Or is it how customized and bespoke it will have to be, right? So I think that transition is already happening, right? And SAP from the product strategy wise, from our business strategy wise, we do believe that there, you know, you'll, you'll actually will continue to see uh, SAP making very bold move in this area. Well, and, and that's kind of your roots. I, mean, I remember the second Sapphire I was ever at, I think it was 2011, mm -hmm. and we were fresh off the, my first Hadoop world, it was the second Hadoop world ever. So we were starstruck with big data. And I was listening to Bill McDermott speak. Yeah. He was a very good speaker, really smooth and, and insightful individual. But he wasn't talking about big data. And John Furrier and I yeah. commented in our narrative, SAP is about big, fast data yeah. to drive, in, increase the time to value for business outcomes. And that goes way back to before anybody was really talking about big data. So it's a, your roots, is it, is it not? Yeah, it, absolutely. Our our roots is always about business outcome, right? Um, and that is really has been the DNA of, of our, uh, as the whole company, right? No matter, I represent the platform side of the SAP business, but you look at the entire SAP business portfolio, it is about business outcome, right? And we never forget, let ourselves forget that, even though we're driving um, the technology layer of, of that business unit, um, yeah. But it is the people who figure out how to drive the business outcome in the most simplified manner, right? In the easier to consume manner, in the one that actually does some business model transformation will win. Um, as I said, right? Um, well, kind of going back to the, the topic here at Big Data Strata, uh, uh, the world here, right? Alta scale is certainly, I believe, uh, is a very important missing um, piece of the solution delivery for SAP, for the, our customer's perspective, but it's also a growth catalyst, right? I think, as I, as I mentioned before, whoever helped lower the threshold of the adoption of the big data, either application or technology, will be the one who can help the customer transform the business. And sustain that customer's loyalty, and, and, and just, to, just to make sure that I got it right, yeah. what Alta Scale ultimately does is, and, and again, we've seen it, a lot of folks download software, a lot mm -hmm. of folks going into pilots, mm -hmm. they fail, they try again, they fail, they mm -hmm. try again. Yep. The tech industry is the dominant, has most, many of the success cases for these technologies are in the tech industry. We have to get outside the tech industry and what AltaScale is helping right. is to accelerate time to success. 
Absolutely, and you can see, right, just like any other software company that's focusing on big data, uh, the success has been in internet companies, right, who actually can invest in developer resources, building the skill set around, let's say, Hadoop ecosystem, to media company, advertising company. These are all the, uh, you know, pretty well known, no matter which vendor you, you are. Um, but uh, when SAP comes in and we introduce Vora, we're kind of seeing that whole bridging into the core enterprise, right? Not necessarily known as you're talking about the manufacturing company, the financial services banking companies, right? Telecommunication companies, um, you know, retails, consumer packaged goods, right? O you know, oil and gas company, you know. So the, the industry, I think, can really uh, greatly value, be valued by these infusion of new technology and big data thinking. And, and that's why we're excited about Autoscale, right? We're also excited about the evolution of Aura. I think, as I said, there's only about uh, six months since the product GA. We're really on target in terms of number of customers that are coming in. Um, and we're actually doing a product announcement in November. Right? Stay tuned for that, right? Um, in, in one of our SAP events in Barcelona. You'll see that from even 1.1 to 1.2, 1.3, they really have been kind of evolutionized from the SQL on Hadoop engine to what we really are calling a distributed computing platform and distributed computing framework, right? The ability to kind of not only process data directly off of Hadoop HDFS or across any type of storage medium. Okay, so without divulging, because it's not announced yet, but, yeah. but the emphasis is on expanding the data types, if you will, yes. that, that are under management and, and accessible. Yeah, so I don't want to kind of <laughs> give out, get, get the, the news out too soon, right? But, but I think everybody understands the, the way that we're building application today, right? It is going to be a multimodal process. Oh, it sure right? will. Yeah. Multimodal data engine, right? Who wants to have five different databases supporting one application? I mean, SAP is in the business building applications, right? We internally go through that pain, and we understand what, on the big data side, how to evolve that. Well, the people who want to do that is the five guys who run those five different databases. But that's not necessarily achieving the outcome. That's not necessarily achieving the outcome. You're creating unnecessary complexity in your architecture. It's not necessarily easily scalable, right? Um, so there, there are pros and cons. There's obviously very good reason for doing that for, for whatever uh, customer scenarios. But we do believe that really the evolution of how the modern data, uh, I would say application architecture need to be evolved. This has to be dramatically simplified. And, but your focus models. remains on the application. You've been, SAP's been clear about that. You're not trying to be an infrastructure provider. You might provide infrastructure yeah. as part of your cloud offering, but it's not like you're trying to compete with EMC. Right, <laughs> so we are not going to be uh, in the business of providing infrastructure as a service, right? And that, that is one thing I want to clarify. But pass? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our application platform as a service, no question about that, yeah. right? And that is kind of the where we believe the value add would be. I also, re part of my um, responsibility representing our HANA call platform, right? That's our application platform as a service is offering. And really has been really so well adopted in, in our um, install base as the platform for building any extension, whether it's on-premise, in the cloud, or integration, right? So this is kind of the where this engagement platform, if you will, that whole uh, mobile-driven um, user interface or, or any type of a solution set, that application that you want to build that mini app directly ex off of extension to what you have already purchased, either it's a SaaS app or your know, on-premise investment. All right, we have to leave it there, Ken. Thanks very much for coming by theCUBE. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, and um, hopefully we can catch up a little bit later, and we'll talk a little bit more about Vora 1.7. All right, looking forward to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, you. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from New York City. We'll be right back. Thank you.